shooting star out of me. We'll make a film about a man who's sad and lonely. And all I gotta do is act naturally. Well, I'll bet you I'm gonna be a big star. Bonjour, welcome to Meet Me at the Movies. North event. What? <laughs> Is this the international version? Yeah. Well, you know, you finally got a chance to see uh, Parasite. Finally. Finally. Uh, that that is Frodo Baggins over there beside camera one. Really good to good to see you. You're about the same height. Is, and, that, a, uh, is that a hit on my ears? <laughs> Maybe a little both. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's Greg Tillman. Uh, Greg, good to see you back. And I'm glad you got to see Parasite. Finally. finally. Yeah, great. Wow. Worth it. Defies description. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, it does. It really does. Def and again, the subtitles are not an issue. No, they're I mean, not. Some people just won't go there. And it's yeah. I think if you give it a chance, yes. Uh, if anybody gives it a chance, they will be blown away. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah Noel Manning here uh, back there on the Tim Cam. Uh, we've got uh, Tim Foster and Thomas Manning. Uh, Thomas, I think, was uh, not even paying attention to what's going on there. And, hey, we've got we've got some interns. Who are the interns? Hey, interns! Woohoo! And a special guest over here beside me for the first time, and maybe the last. We'll see if he decides to come back. I don't think he will. <laughs> Daryl Mansell, good to see you, Daryl. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Good, good, good that you could be here. Uh, you and I got to hang out with Thomas uh, in California a little bit at the Critics' Choice Awards. Yes. And, um, our mutual friend Douglas Davidson connected us. Did Douglas not warn you about this show? You know he should have. He, he should have. Yeah. That's on him. You know how big yeah. a friend he is now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He dropped a couple spots. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, we're, we're glad to have you. And uh, first half of the show, we're going to let our audience members, uh, all seven of them, uh, get to know a little bit more about who you are. Uh, we're also going to be uh, talking uh, by, before the uh, end of the show a little bit about uh, Ben Stiller, if we get a chance. Uh, we've got some uh, new movie reviews uh, from Sony Classics and some others to chat about as well. So we'll just see what we're able to get to and we'll kind of dive right into things. Greg, I do want to say I'm happy that you got a chance to see Parasite. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, there's a bug flying around a lot. Yeah, no, he gets, what's he gets distracted very easily, like uh, in the movie Up. You know, the, the, oh, yeah, the squirrels, squirrels, squirrels everywhere. Squirrels. Yeah. No, I'm very, uh, it was uh, astounding. <laughs> we were talking, not the bug, what, the movie. Up or the Doug? Well, or the bug? The, the Up <laughs> and Parasite. Okay. The bug, it's, it's a bug. It's a bug. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you're uh, glad you got to see it. We were talking it. about how before we shot this, it defies genre. It does, yeah. And, and you have zero idea what's coming next. Yeah. You think you do, but. Yeah. Just stunning. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it's highly recommended. It, it's worth uh, all the hype. Yeah. Absolutely worth all the hype. So, Daryl, tell me a little bit about your love of film, how you kind of got into this love. And, and uh, you've also got uh, this whole podcast network that you've developed as well. So, so give us a little bit of information about yourself. Yeah, I, I think the movie that really got me into the love of what a film could be would be Jurassic Park. Okay. That's where I think everything was firing on all cylinders. Great acting, great directing. A John Williams score at the end. That's what made me realize music can make you feel emotions. Um, so you, all sorts of movies from Spielberg specifically have, you know, crafted my love of movie magic, which eventually led me to create my own podcast network where we you know, kind of talk about all things pop culture related. We talk about movies and television and comic books and all that kind of good stuff. There's six shows on the network and each show kind of has its own facet of, of what we talk about as far as pop culture. Me and Doug Davidson have The Cinnamon, right. which is our, our all film show where, you know, we get to, you know, expand each other's horizons of, of film. So really drawn to all types of entertainment, arts and entertainment and pop culture. Oh yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like I said, film, TV, comics, a little bit of gaming, a little bit of anime. You can find something for everyone on our podcast now, network. Do you host every one of these shows or do, do you have other hosts? With the exception of the main show, the Paprika Podcast Network, uh, I host all of them. Yes. Okay. I wow. host uh, six of the seven shows. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about, about film. Uh, recently, you've been able to uh, become a member of the North Carolina Film Critics Association. Yes. And so uh, that's, a, that's a new uh, great thing for you as well. You got a chance to do the Critics' Choice Awards as a guest. Yeah. Uh, got to hobnob with uh, with all the stars as well and, uh, and embrace that. 
Uh, and uh, I think Greg wants to be somebody's guest next year. We're not sure exactly. I've who already is. been told that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, At least well, I'm not Noel's guest. Maybe that can be yours. We will sneak <laughs> in the carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on. That's a good idea. You I need to drop some weight if that's we'll, going to be the case. We'll fold you up, man. We'll just fold <laughs> you up. Well, uh, there's been this whole uh, trending uh, hashtag going around films, 10 films that de define you. And uh, I thought, well, you know, why not pick out five films that define you? And we'll talk about, you know, give you one sentence answer for why. All right. And uh, these are in no particular order, just the order that you uh, sent to me. So I don't know if these are a top five or if these are just five. These are not my top five. Okay. But they are five that define me quite well. All right. Well, let's talk about The Matrix is one of those that's on your list. So why does that movie define you? Uh, well, it says not my top five, but Matrix is my favorite film of all time. It, uh, it perfectly captures my idea of science fiction, what science fiction is and what it could be, and pushing the boundaries of telling a story in the sci-fi world. So how do you feel about the, the next installment that's going to be coming out? Are you excited about that? I am. I am. I am somewhere between excited and cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's more story to be told, and as long as they've cracked a good story, you know, they've got the, the main gang back together, so I'm here for it. Okay. So for you, it sounds like story is an important aspect of any film that you're drawn to. The story is the basis of, okay. of all film, Has I to think. Be. We, we've talked about that. Yeah. 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 We, we feel the same way. Fletch is on your list. Uh, I'm a big Fletch fan yes. as well, Chevy Chase fan, and uh, you know, that was a, a, a shortened franchise. I think they were hoping for those to go a lot longer than they did. but. What is it about Fletch that, uh, that defines you? Fletch captures my nature, I think, perfectly. <laughs> okay. uh, very sarcastic and sardonic okay. is what he is, and that's kind of what I've, what I've molded most of my personality to be, that very witty one-liner guy. He's just always got a smart reply for something. Right. That's very much who I am. Okay. So is there uh, one... It sounds like a warning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he, Fletch was many characters. Was there one of his characters that you were drawn to more than another? Uh, Mr. Babar okay. was, was, uh, was my favorite out of those. For me, uh, Claude B. Schmoot, I think, was one of my favorite. Oh, very series, nice. So. Very nice. <laughs> All right, so Fletch, The Matrix, and also Marvel's The Avengers. Joss Whedon uh, got a chance to do some incredible writing for this film and uh, directing as well. Yes, yes, he did. This definitely definitely speaks to my love of comic books. I read a lot of comic books. I'm reading an Avengers run right now where when I finish that, I'll read 15 years of Avengers. They are my favorite superhero wow. team. Marvel is my favorite yeah. publishing company as far as superheroes are concerned. That one was a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Well, and, and Whedon had this, has, has this deep love of comics as well, and I think yeah. it really did shine through. And you go back and look at what he did with uh, with Firefly and what he did with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and uh, I, I was a big fan of the work. Uh, Dolomite is my name. Eddie Murphy uh, came out with a film just this past year that was pretty amazing mm -hmm. on a lot of different levels. Uh, it got love from certain organizations uh, during award season. Others kind of left it behind. What is it about Dolomite is my name that uh, defines Daryl? How Eddie Murphy played Rudy Ray Moore as a guy who hustles. And you know, a lot of movies you see a guy who hustles to either scrape by or to gain status or money. His end goal was just to be able to entertain and you know, take, take away people's ills for a couple of hours while he entertained them, made them smile and laugh, which is pretty much what I have been doing with my podcast network. Okay. Uh, the same grit and hustle and determination to just to make a name for himself. He says, I want the world to know who I am yeah. in the movie. And that really resonated with me. Okay. Yeah, and a fun movie to watch too. And it's great uh, movie. It's amazing to watch that and go back and watch the original Rudy Ray Moore films mm -hmm. as well. It's a nice companion uh, piece. Wow. And the, the attention to detail uh, in recreating the character right. uh, and that place and time, pretty pretty wonderfully done. It is, it is. I yeah. think uh, not enough people saw that movie. I agree, I agree. And Clerks, uh, another great film uh, that defines Daryl Mansell. Yeah, uh, I, I understand Dante fully. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing what I do for my nine to five, five okay. job now. He's, he wants to get out and do something more with his life okay. in that movie. You know, in the, towards the end of that movie, he makes that decision of I'm gonna, you know, out of here, go back to school, this, that, and the third. That is very much how I feel right now. I'm, I'm stuck in this rut of a job. And I would like to <laughs> do more, which kind of okay. goes back to, you know, the Eddie Murphy and Dolomite yeah. thing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks, man. Those, uh, those five films 
Uh, if, you, if you're just tuning in, five films that define Daryl Mansell, The Matrix, Fletch, Marvel's The Avengers, Dolomite Is My Name, and Clerks, and there are many more. That's a pretty diverse list. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think maybe we can do a, a full show at some point and talk about films that define each of us. Uh, you know, we have that as in, um, okay. yeah, yeah, we'll see if, if listeners care, uh, send us that email, info at c19.tv. They don't. Uh, if you want to go, go for that. And if you don't, don't. Um, send us that email and let us know you don't. <laughs> so we'll take it off. Uh, Tim, uh, have we have any emails coming in, any phone calls coming in right now? No? Okay. All right. Just checking. Did just you hear crickets checking. just then? I <laughs> yeah, heard the crickets. <laughs> heard the crickets. Thomas, uh, get, on, get on that email. Get on that Gmail thing now. I appreciate it. All right. All right, man. There's a new film called Photograph. Uh, we are going to get a chance to review that. So, uh, Daryl, you, you checked out this film. So, give me some thoughts on, on this film, Photograph. Yes. Yes, I did. I checked it out uh, it's in yesterday. theaters now. In theaters now. It came out just in time for, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, of course. You got to have that romance film that's in theaters for Valentine's Day. Uh, it is an incredibly wonderful film. Um, starring Lakeith Stanfield, Issa Rae, you know, they, they have credits behind their names, Issa Rae from Insecure, Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta, you know, Uncut Gems, a couple other things. Uh, pretty much the story of, it tells a parallel story of a, uh, a woman back in the 80s, a photographer who moves to New York, away from New Orleans to pursue her love of photography and how that kind of wrecked havoc with the, the love of her life or the one where she ends up being the one that got away. And it tells a parallel story of her daughter uh, who's kind of in the same rut. And uh, it's a, a journalist writing a story on the mother, of course, goes to the daughter for you know some insight and information. And then that's where that bond of love starts growing from there. It's a uh, films of themes of identity okay. is, uh, you know, do I want to end up being like my parents when I get their age? Or, you know, do I try to avoid the same pratfalls that they, that they missed? Yeah, you know, all that have kind I of learned stuff. lessons from what they have been through? Right, right. You know, some of the same fears are reverberated throughout, you know, both generations down to the similar camera shots coming wow. out of both to try to, you know, visually, thematically link those two together. It's incredibly well acted, incredibly well directed movie. I think enough people, unfortunately, will not be able to see this before it leaves theaters because yeah. I think it's run this ending not too, not too long from now, but if you can, get out and watch this movie. It's difficult to tell a film from two different time periods right. and make it work well. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there have been quite a few films out there that have done it poorly. Some have had success with it, but this one sounds like it really works well. Yeah, yeah, directed by Stella Meggie, uh, which she did. I'm not sure how much else she has under yeah. her belt, but I will definitely be looking for more after this. And okay. all of that is marked by a wonderful, wonderful soundtrack. If you like smooth jazz, hip hop, which I do, um, the songs that they chose for this, uh, they give heart to the themes and the scenes perfectly. Okay, awesome. And so if you're gonna give this a report card rating like with an A to an F, where Solid A. Solid A. All right. Solid A for photograph still in theaters. I see um, Douglas had a lot of trouble coming up with his yeah, he adapting did. his rating system to ours. Yeah, Douglas couldn't but, quite. But Daryl did not. Yeah. So you know who needs to be here more often. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, saying. Douglas. Look at that. He showed you up, man. <laughs> he showed you up. Well, uh, you know, I'd love to have you back again. We come back again. Love we'll, to we'll, be back. We'll look at some other films. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll bring Thomas back. Uh, from uh, behind the scenes. He's getting ready. Uh, he's got a Godfather shirt on. Uh, Tim's going to send us to an intermission. And then uh, after that, uh, we will be back. So where can people find you if they want to find some of your work? Uh, you can find Paprika, P-O-P-R-I-K-A, where all your fine podcasts are. You can find uh, the Paprika Facebook group if you just search for it. Come on in, get in the conversation. We'd love to have everybody. And uh, you can find us on Twitter as well. Awesome. Thanks, man. Douglas. I'm Doug. Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. Glad you're here, man. Thank you. Look forward to having you back. Uh, likewise. All right, we're going to take an intermission. We'll be back with more right here on Meet Me in the Movies. Hello, welcome back to Meet Me in the Movies. I am Noel T. Manning II with uh, Greg Tillman over there beside camera one, yeah. keeping us uh, keeping us alive and uh, making sure that we don't mess up too badly. And, that's, and people have asked, alive? yeah, well, people have asked, 
you know, Greg always asks, why is he here? You know, why am I here? Why am I here? And, uh, it's a very we, existential question. It I is. Know. It is. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's the, I mean, Forky asked the same question. Sporky. Sporky asked the same question with, with Toy Story 4. I why like being I compared to him. Yeah. Why yeah. am I here? Uh, and, and no, you're not trash. So I'll just share that with you. But, Thanks, but, Noel. Coming from yeah, you. Yeah, no back. worries. But, but maybe. <laughs> means a lot. <laughs> but maybe we are, uh, and that's why he's here. So if we really mess up badly, Thomas, like he did last week, we might pull the plug. Yeah, uh, Thomas yeah. Manning uh, is, is back, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we we, we uh, saw this film that had Steve Coogan in it. Yeah. Steve Coogan, I like him. I, I think he's, uh, he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's a film called Greed. It's a Sony classic film. Uh, Asa Butterfield is in this as well. I really like Asa Butterfield. Um, is it is it uh, Isla Fisher? I don't know. I should have looked at the pronunciation. Isla, but, uh, yeah. What Isla is it? Isla, I Isla, think. Isla, Isla. Yeah. We will we will check that out. Um, we got, she's lovely. Well, she is, and is. we do have a viewer that will always let us know. And so, if you're out there, let me know. Is it Isla or Isla? Uh, check that out and let us know. But the movie is called Greed, uh, and it's a different kind of film, like Parasite, kind of defied genre. This one defies genre as well, but does it do it in a perfect no, way or a not so perfect way? It's uh, one of the messiest ways you could have <laughs> to get, combined all these genres. They just, you know, were mixing up some sort of recipe and threw it at a wall to see what would stick, and uh, pretty much nothing stuck, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't mince words, Thomas. What do you really think of it? You know, normally we wait to give you an idea of how good or how yeah, bad it was. Yeah. But yeah. This one, uh, yeah. So, directed by uh, Michael Winterbottom, and it's um, loosely based. I don't think that's uh, a real name. <laughs> Winterbottom. Well, well, that just doesn't sound like I was waiting for you to make British. it come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's actually loosely based on a true story of this um, kind of fashion mogul named uh, Philip Green in the UK and some of the corruption of his businesses. And, okay, think. Um, a different take on the Wolf of Wall Street, um, but in a way that was as convoluted and as just confusing and yeah. every other word that you can think of that didn't fit. Uh, honestly, this is one of those films, sometimes films are, are so bad yeah. that it's hard to describe yeah. why yeah. they were so bad. Yeah. And for this movie, it started out actually promising. It had this Adam McKay kind of feel to it at the beginning. Right. Uh, there were some interesting things going on with the editing, the split screens. Yeah. Um, some parallel timelines yeah, that were trying it, to tell the story. Right, with. you could tell there was, there was uh, an attempt at really being satirical. So the first 15, 20 minutes, yeah. I think, were, they were the best part of yeah. this film. But then it started going down this rabbit hole, and um, the writer was the same, the director and the writer. Yeah, together, yeah, that's right. Wrote and directed, and uh, I really, after about 35 minutes, I kept going, okay, I'm hoping that it's going to make a turn, and it, never, it did. It kept turning worse and worse and worse. It yeah. kept getting worse and worse and worse, and it couldn't decide if it wanted to tell you, give you a message about sweatshops, a message about... Syrian uh, refugees. Yes, yeah, Syrian refugee. I mean, it had all these different messages it was trying to share with you. It couldn't focus. Yeah. And that yeah. was a real, real problem I had with yeah. it. Yeah. And then in the middle of this, there was basically a documentarian making a movie or making a documentary about our central figure. Uh, Sir Richard McCready was the name of the figure. And um, it's like you've got this guy writing a book doing behind the scenes interviews and then you're switching to commentaries on the class system and then later on you're talking about uh, the exploitation of reality TV and it's just there was no correlation between any right. of that and there could have been like like we're talking about with Parasite was able to weave so many things together in such a beautiful way but this it was just so incredibly messy yeah there have been other films that have been able to tell multiple stories and connect them where it felt seamless mm -hmm. yeah but this one it, it it almost felt like there were five different directors directing these different yeah. segments and they couldn't figure out how to piece them together uh, very disappointed in this film yeah. uh, I, I do not recommend it at all uh, there there's the only good thing i can say about it is if you want to watch 15 minutes of something interesting I don't waste your time on this. You can if you want to watch the first 15 minutes, but, but yeah. I, I, I don't recommend yeah. it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Coogan did a great job. Yeah. That's the best thing about this. 
Uh, Coogan did a wonderful job. Um, You'll find yourself laughing at some of the uh, some of the little jokes and satire in there. Some of the comedic timing is really good, but it's just so incredibly inconsistent, yep. and you just can't connect with it. It was purposeless. Yeah, yeah. Purposeless? Does that sound like? I a think word? that's the word. Yeah, it was without purpose. Yeah. There you go. So, what is your rating for this? <laughs> like a show. <laughs> I'm going to give it about a D plus. Yeah. And that's being generous. I I'm guess. I'm right with you. <laughs> yeah. D, D plus. Yeah. 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 So, if you want to see a good film named Greed, go back to Eric von Stroheim's silent yes. classic with yes. Jason Pitts. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that, Thomas, and uh, I'm uh, and I'm glad that you asked me to watch it with you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You don't yeah. look very sincere. Well, I am. I endured, mm. you know. And, and actually, he he did say, "Dad, you don't have to keep watching it if you don't want to." So, <laughs> but I did. Yeah. I stuck through it. Yeah. I stuck through it. You well, had to we prove did get that you're as tough as him. Huh? <laughs> That's yeah. Right. Well, we got non-viewer mail. We actually got two pieces of non-viewer mail. And uh, the first one related. I didn't know we had that many people not watching. I know, yeah. I know. Uh, the first one relates to a tweet that Thomas had out mm. uh, recently, yeah. relating to Suicide Squad versus Scorsese films, yeah, yeah. and the fact that Suicide Squad has as many Oscars as a few Scorsese right, films yeah. combined. So what? yeah, you take you know five of Scorsese's most influential films. You take Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, Gangs of New York, The Wolf of Wall Street, and The Irishman. So between them, there are 35 total Oscar nominations, but only one win for <laughs> Joe Pesci for Supporting Actor in Goodfellas in 1991. You look at Suicide Squad in uh, the Oscars in 2017, one nomination, Do one win for hair and makeup. You know, I would say it was a well-deserved Oscar. Um, I mean, the movie itself was... Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. We, re we reviewed that last week. I don't want to put it down too much because we already spent too much time on that <laughs> yes, last we week. Did. But, but you, it's it's pretty interesting to compare uh, five of the most influential films of the past, you know, four decades really, and uh, especially when you look at the whole the whole kind of war between Scorsese and comic book films. Which right. There's not yeah. there's that's not really a war anyway. It's that's kind of been overblown and blown out of proportion. But still, that that's just a really interesting to Well, statistic when you mention those at. films, and, and Greg and I have talked about this for years, is just because something doesn't win an Oscar doesn't mean yeah. it's not going to yeah. have longevity. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, doesn't mean we're not going to be talking about it for decades to come. And sometimes those who win the Best Picture Oscars, you forget about them. Yeah. Um, More often than not, that may be true. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, but you look at that list that you just gave us of those Scorsese films, those yeah. are all legendary, mm -hmm. they're classics, Yeah. and uh, if you are a film lover, uh, I think you need to watch those films. Yeah, yeah, most certainly. Um, and you can decide if you want to watch Suicide Squad or not. Uh, Daryl, you know, Daryl may feel differently about Suicide Squad because he's a, a huge fan of comic books. Are you a Suicide Squad? No, no, okay, all right, just wanted to make sure. All right. Just wanted to make sure. So, uh, so yeah, that that was uh, that tweet really blew me away yeah. as well. When I saw it out, I couldn't yeah. believe what I was seeing. But yeah, so thanks for sharing that yeah. and uh, clarifying that. Uh, the other uh, non-viewer mail piece relates to Ben Stiller. Um, the question came to me that uh, you know Noel Manning, you guys talked about Ben Stiller's Tropic Thunder last week as a film to go back and check out again, and you re-reviewed it from a review from the vault. So, what are five essential Ben Stiller films that everyone should see? So, uh, Greg, you said you haven't seen too many Ben Stiller films. Uh, his on-screen persona bugs me a little bit. He's a okay. little too harsh. Although, I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Fantastic. I love that film. Yeah. The views were kind of, but I don't know why they were as mediocre as they were. Yeah. It wasn't bad, just wasn't as positive as I thought it should have been. Yeah, I love the film. It's a beautiful cinematography. He did some great acting in it. Editing was, it was a really lovely, underrated film. I am, I am drawn to these films that have these kind of real life but fantastical elements yeah, to it. Yeah. And that's one of those films. Forrest Gump yeah. is one of those as well. But, yeah. but I'm drawn to those films that, that take you into a fantasy, but it's not truly a fantasy world. Yeah. And Walter Mitty was one of those that yeah. had a lot of messages, some great acting. And um, I like the original with Danny Kaye from yeah. what, late 40s, early 50s? But this takes it, this elevates the I think the so whole, too. I think so too. Premise. So yeah, that's on the list. Um, the uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Uh, also, uh, Brad Status is a film, one of my favorite films from 2017. You're going to a Harvard. father and son road trip, looking, they're looking for a college <laughs> for the son. 
and you really get this really interesting dynamic of the relationships. It's a father-son relationship, it's a relationship about family and uh, letting go. And it's a film I highly recommend. Not enough people saw that, but it's called Brad Status from 2017. Meet the parents. Uh, if you want to just see, um, see crazy uh, kookiness uh, with Robert De Niro uh, and Ben Stiller together, uh, I highly recommend uh, Meet the Parents. Uh, not at the museum. Uh, this one, Thomas, you're going to chime in on this one. I mean, yeah, that was one of the one of my favorite family films growing up, and I watched it over and over. I don't know if I went back and looked at it if it would hold up as much as a 20-year-old now, but uh, you know, when I was the age, like I think I was in first grade when it came out, and I probably subjected you to that one <laughs> way too many times for your liking. But but I think we, uh, you know, Ben Stiller, that was probably the first time I ever saw him on screen. I've always kind of held that memory with yeah, us. Yeah, and Steve Coogan was in. Uh, oh, he was Liz indeed. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that movie really, it, I think it still holds as a great family, um, a family film. Uh, and then, of course, Tropic Thunder, as we talked about last week, I think that's an essential one that you need to check out. I think you have to give an honorable mention to There's Something About Mary. Okay. Well, I, I just had five. Yeah. So any others you want to talk about? Find no, something about that's Mary. That's about it. Was, was, pretty, uh, was pretty groundbreaking yeah. in a, a lot of ways. <laughs> it, uh, let's just say it took some chances, and it got away it with it. put the Fairley so. Brothers on the map, though. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah it did. So, uh, so thanks for that non-viewer mail. And if you have any non-viewer mail, uh, that's info at c19.tv. You can send our way. And uh, if you want to listen to the podcast of this, that's wg.org. WG and, of course, uh, c19.tv is where you can find the streaming end of these shows. Yep. And, of and course, all our other shows. And all the other shows as well. Yeah. And then if you're watching this um, through, uh, through broadcast cable, that is uh, just Channel 19. That's Our where the spectrum. whole 19 comes around. So meet me the movies. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to spend with us today. The movie quote of the week, as we always like to wrap things up, uh, this does come from The Irishman. So this comes from Frank from The Irishman. You don't know how fast time goes by until you get there. I, I, like, that. I like that quote. So do appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, Greg Tillman over there beside camera one, Thomas Manning over here uh, beside me in this uh, studio, uh, and also Daryl, thanks for joining us. Daryl, thank you, man. I look forward to having you back, uh, back here on the Tim Cam with the interns right here on C19.tv. And until next time, I'm Noel T. Manning II, and that is a wrap.